Hey, what's up everybody? And welcome back to another gal tutorial. Today I'm gonna be showing you how to fake a tiny planet effect using a panoramic photo that I got from Envato Elements and superimpose a person, it could be yourself, in this case it's gonna be me, to make it look like I'm standing on the planet. I'm gonna add a fake sun and some cool shadow effects. This is gonna be a pretty cool tutorial. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in. But first I wanna let you guys know that this video is sponsored by Oxygen Bank. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about that later on. Basically, it's designed to help freelancers achieve financial freedom. So let's go ahead and jump on into the tutorial. So to create the tiny planet effect without a 360 camera, you need to start with a panoramic photo. Now you can take a panoramic photo with your own iPhone or camera. In this case, I'm using a stock image from Envato Elements. Here inside of Photoshop, I have it open. The first step is to squish this image into a square. So go up to image and go to image size. Make sure that this link is turned off and we're going to make the width the same as the height. And then hit okay. So now it's squished, now we need to flip it and then add a filter to create the tiny planet effect. So now let's go to image and let's go ahead and rotate it 180 degrees. And then with the layer selected, go up to filter, go to distort and polar coordinates and select rectangular to polar, and then hit okay. And now we have the tiny planet effect. You can see that there's some distortion around the edges. What we can do is actually get rid of that by just scaling this up. So let's go ahead and scale this up and then we can reposition it. So that way that distortion is out of the frame. And you can scale it up as much as you want until the tiny planet looks about the right size that you want. So that looks good. And now you can see that there's a seam where it was spliced together, the two sides. And we need to fix that, we need to make it less obvious. So we're gonna use the spot healing tool. If you click on the ellipsis here, go down to find the spot healing brush tool. And now let's zoom in and let's hit control to adjust the brush size. So, so it's a little bit smaller. And then we can click and go over this line. And it starts to make it less obvious. Don't worry, we're going to Use the clone tool next, so that way it's even less obvious. And let's do the same down here over the water. Let's go ahead and go over that. Now if we zoom out, it's a little less obvious. Now we need to use the clone tool to fix this area here. So if you click on the clone stamp tool, and if you hit option and click, you're gonna take a sample of this blue area. And then if you click, you can put that color over top here. And what I'm doing is I'm just, just clicking until I can start to make this line less obvious. So again, option, click, start clicking over that building that I replicated there, and that way, it's less obvious what is happening there. And you can see if we just happened upon this photo fully scaled out, you probably wouldn't have noticed that there's a seam there. So let's go through and just make sure everything's okay. Let's go up here. That's looking good. Okay. That seam is less obvious. Now it's pretty good, it's not completely perfect, but remember we're gonna superimpose an image of myself on top of this tiny planet so it will cover up any more seams. And if you wanna change where these buildings are around the world, you can actually hit Command minus on a Mac or Control minus on a PC, and you can click on this image and you can rotate this so the buildings can change in rotation. So if you wanna shift it over just a little bit like that, you can do that as well. I'm just gonna leave it around here and I think that looks good and hit return. So now let's add a sun so that way we can start to cast shadows correctly. So I'm going to go down here to new layer and I'm going to fill this in as a solid color. Black is fine. Then I'm gonna go to filter and go to render lens flare and convert to smart object so you can do this. And you can see the different types of lens flares here. Let's choose the 105 prime and hit okay. And then because of the black, we can change the blend mode 
to screen. And what screen does is take away all of the black. So we're just left with the lens flare. And now we can click and reposition this how we want. We can even rotate it and just hit don't show again and hit okay. And when we rotate it, it'll go away and then hit return and you can see it again. And we can scale it up a bit if we want to and hit return. So now this planet is good to go. You can export it as its own tiny planet. But what if you wanna superimpose yourself or somebody else in the center of this tiny planet? That is what I'm gonna show you next. So let me open up this image here of the cutout that I created. So this was the original photo of just me standing on my balcony here, and I just removed the background. So here I am with a transparent background, and I can just click and drag myself on top of this planet here, and then I can scale myself down and just place me roughly in the center until it looks right. So right around here is fine, and then hit return, and make sure that I am behind underneath the sun layer so that way the sun and the light affects the image so it looks more natural to the scene. Now the next step is to create a shadow of myself. So what I can do is I can actually duplicate this layer. So if I control click I can hit duplicate and we can just call it layer one copy that's fine. And then I'm going to go up to image and go to adjustments, exposure, and just completely reduce the exposure until I'm black. And this is going to be the shadow. So then let's go ahead and lock this lens flare so we don't keep grabbing it. So hit the lock icon so it's locked. And then this layer is going to become the shadow. So we can rotate this down to match where the lighting is coming from, from the light here. And let's also squish it and distort it because shadows are not perfect. So I'm gonna hit shift and let's distort this make it a little bit more squished in and let's scale it up and squish it a little bit more. Now the next step is to apply a Gaussian blur on this so that way it's less of a harsh edge. Let's go up to filter, blur, and let's go to Gaussian blur and let's just add around seven using the slider. That looks good. Now let's go ahead and let's change this to a linear burn blend mode. And then when we reduce the fill, you'll start to see it blend in with the planet. If this is normal, it's not gonna have that cool burn effect. So let's change this to linear burn. And then we can adjust the fill. If you click down here, you can adjust the slider until it looks a little bit more natural. So that looks good. You can always adjust this fill at any time if you change your mind and you wanna make the shadow a little bit more subtle. Another thing that we need to do is erase the shadow because it's falling off of the planet. So what we need to do is zoom in and just erase around the buildings because we still want the shadow to fall on the building. So click on the eraser tool and then select the shadow layer and then we can start to erase the shadow off the planet. So now we can zoom out and kind of look, okay, what else needs to happen to make this look more realistic? So I'm already seeing that the shadow still looks a little bit harsh. So I'm gonna reduce the opacity just a little bit so it's not as fully dark there. I think that looks a little bit better. So now that the shadow's looking better, the next step I notice is that my feet look kind of unnatural here. I'm actually wearing black socks here, so it doesn't help in the fact that I'm not wearing shoes. But what we can do is kind of make an imprintation like I'm actually standing in the grass here. So to do that, what I'm going to do is create another layer here just by clicking on the new layer button and make sure it's below the image of myself. And I'm going to use the paint tool here and I'm going to make the brush by hitting control click make it a little bit bigger I think around 70 is fine and make the hardness really low so that way it's more soft around the edges and then I'm just going to click and just gently create an imprint around my feet here a little bit up here so that way a little bit darker between my legs there so it looks a little bit more natural and then just around this side so it looks a little bit better. 
and then we can change the blend mode. So from normal, let's go ahead and see which blend mode looks better. I usually just scrub through. Typically overlay is pretty good. Soft light is good. I think soft light looks really good here. And now we have a better imprintation going on. It looks a little bit better. And then what we can do is adjust the opacity. So we can grab the slider here and just make some adjustments. You can see if it's fully black, it doesn't look that great. So let's just drag it down to around 76%. And then what we can do is play around with the actual lighting of the planet. So what we're going to use, use the burn tool to do this. But first we're going to create another layer and from edit, we're gonna go up to fill and let's fill this at 50% gray and hit okay. And then let's change the blend mode to overlay. And then we're gonna go over to the toolbar. And if you don't see the burn tool already here, you're gonna click on the ellipsis. And from here, you're gonna go down to burn tool. And from here, let's control click and let's increase the burn tool to around 500 and then the hardness can be zero. And then we can start to just paint over this area by clicking and you can see how it gets darker. And because this side of the planet should be darker than the rest, we can even go up here around the buildings just to make it darker. So that way the side of the planet is less dark because the sun is not shining on it. And I think that's looking good. We can also adjust the opacity. So if we wanted to lower that so it's not quite as dark, we can always adjust the opacity. So now I think this is looking really cool. I love this effect. I'm just gonna go ahead and go up to file and I'm going to export this as a quick PNG. And now I can upload it to my Instagram. I can just do final tiny planet. And then I would just airdrop it to my phone. If this video helped you, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And now I'm gonna tell you guys about the sponsor of this video, Oxygen. So if you guys are starting out as freelance creatives on YouTube, keeping track of your finances can be really difficult. I know for myself, it was difficult to even think about, okay, how do I get my own card for my own business? So that way I can think about deductions and all that tax stuff that a lot of creatives don't even wanna think about. Well, I just applied for a card through Oxygen Bank and they mailed me a card in the mail. I didn't even have to go into a bank and and they send you this nice debit card that you can use for all of your business expenses and you can activate the card just through the app, which is really cool. And better yet, Oxygen has resources to help you guys figure out when you might be ready to actually incorporate your business and form an LLC. I recently did that in the last year and it's been super helpful to have that separate space, separate from my personal you know, expenses. So I encourage you guys to explore Oxygen to see if it might be a good fit for you for starting out your business and your entrepreneurship that you're doing with your own company or whatever creative business that you guys are doing. And I put a link to apply to the Oxygen card inside of my description box below. So that's it for this video and I hope that you guys found it useful and thanks again to Oxygen for supporting creatives and freelancers. See you guys next time, bye.